And out front, it's Eric Jones. Big wreck back there. That's Harrison Burton in the 21. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 47. There was a third line forming. Guys were indecisive if they were going to jump yeah, into straight, it or straight, not. Straight, back left, back left, back left, back left. Got sub damage, guys, right in front. Two laps remaining. A shot to advance. We see the nine of Chase Elliott slides to that outside line. He's going to try to take the lead with a little help from the 43. Elliott with the help of Jones. He searches ahead. Chase Elliott through the dog leg. Blaney with momentum. He's not going to get there. Elliott's going to win in Talladega. What a move for Chase Elliott. Uh, these things are so, so hard to win. You got to enjoy them. And moments like that you have to you have to really cherish and you guys are what makes this special to me so thank you what's up everybody welcome to another edition of nascar inside the race the show that takes you a little bit deeper than all the stuff you saw on sunday i'm alan cavana joined by two of the best in the business from the motor racing network todd gordon and from nbc sports Steve Latart, and dare I say, guys, we saw something of a, a calm, a, a stress-free Talladega race. Are you kidding me? Well, it was calm, but it was no less entertaining. Uh, it proved to me that, that I don't need all the carnage, all the wrecks. I actually prefer the racing that we saw. I like two lanes. I like seeing skill being very, very, very important. And it came, uh, came up in multiple times. The end of each stage was pretty captivating to watch him come through the trial and figure it all out. And then we just... Got to relive that last move by Chase Elliott. It took him to victory lane. Pretty impressive. That's what I loved. At the end of the day, it was in the driver's hands on a restart, taking it to the checkered flag. Yeah, it was. And, and I thought all the drivers worked very well together with amongst themselves. You know, we saw guys give and take, which is something we haven't seen a lot of these speedway races in the past. We saw guys get jacked up and sideways and <laughs> gather their stuff back up. I think the cars are driving a little better than they used to. But you saw some give and take with everybody understand what was on the line. All right, let's take a look at what's on today's edition of the show. Here's what's on the box. The Talladega tiptoe. Patience and skill won out in Alabama. We'll break down Chase Elliott's path to victory and how he avoided some of the stuff out there. Now, look, not everybody could win, of course, but there were still plenty of points out there available, and it took strategy to get them. We'll break down how some of those stages and ultimately the race was won. And, of course, we are looking ahead to the Roval. Elimination is on the line Sunday in Charlotte. So many different plans, potential for chaos on Sunday. We'll take a look at the right plan, maybe even come up with one or two of our own. That's what these crew chiefs here are for. But let's, let's start with Talladega, of course, because Mr. Popular, Chase Elliott, ends up getting the checkered flag. And it took strategy, it took skill, it took a pretty damn good day from the nine car to get the checkered flag. Well, it was a good day, but it was a good day all around, right? Like, if we look at his entire race using our line graph, we're going to see that what matters most at Talladega was points. He ended up winning the race, which is the goal, but points was really it. So the day for the nine, really, there's there's two points other than the checkered flag where, you know, those all important points are awarded. And they're right here, basically at the end of stage one, and they're right here at the end of stage two. So if you look at it, look, there's up, there's downs, there's up, there's downs. But look, when it mattered the most, both stages and the end of the race, he won a stage, he was good in the first stage, he won the race. His skill, his strategy, patience, everything paid off when it mattered. Yeah, definitely not caught up in the moment. Understands the situation he's racing in. Taking it easy through the through the points and not putting himself in, in position to be vulnerable until the money was coming out, the points times. And, and all three of those, he rose the occasion, got his, found his way back up there. Pretty good speed in his race car. Pretty good speed, but that last restart, I mean, this was a track position race for a lot of these cars, and he restarts fifth and makes his way to the front. Let's take a look at how he did this. So in my mind, this right here was where it all kind of went right for him. If you really take a second and you look at this outside line, right, there's big energy from Chastain, the white car, pushing the 43 of Jones into the back bumper of the nine. I think the 43 has a run here that could perhaps go by the nine, but instead he chooses to push. And watch how far he pushes this nine out. This energy right here in the top lane is huge. Um, this I, is I coming to the white, right? Coming to the white right here. I would have to say this is a little bit of a tip of the hat. You're in a bow tie, I'm in a bow tie, I'm gonna do what I need to do. Now we're coming to the checker, Todd. Uh, and everybody stayed in line until really the final few hundred yards. Yeah, definitely. I think if the 43 takes that run coming to the white, he gets shuffled back because he loses the momentum there. He took Chase up to the front and got him where they were in a four position drag race here. And really, if you look at it at this point, the bottom line is now yeah. right here. <laughs> 
And right here, it's chaos Chris. coming to the start finish line, but a great run to give the nine the push to get to this point. So close for some of those drivers. Then we have another look from Ross Chastain because the 43 ends up, I think, sixth, maybe one of the best cars all day. Gets the, kind of the back end of this, but the, four, the one car, 43, good car, cars all day. So you talked about kind of the calmness of Talladega. I think a lot of things went into that recipe. There was a lot of safety conversations. We had a truck burned to the ground. Thank goodness Jordan Anderson yeah. uh, is out of the hospital after some burns. But uh, I think we maybe mistaken the, some of the pressure to the playoffs. We heard all these drivers, they said points, points, points. That's all we heard all day long. That onboard with Ross Chastain we're getting ready to show, that is the point for me. He stayed in line until he knew he couldn't go back. This is coming to the checkered. So look, he has not left the middle lane all Fit, like the last 10 laps of this race, he finally says, I'm done pushing the 43, but look how close we are to the start finish line. Even if it goes wrong, he loses what, two or three points? Now he ends up gaining them. So I think that patience was a little bit of everything, but in my opinion, the most important part for the patience was the points. People had to score points to take a little pressure off the robot. We patience. didn't have anybody <laughs> that hadn't, that, that we didn't have a guaranteed uh, through the, to the yeah, next right. round yet. And the point situation isn't, it's compressed. Everybody's concerned about it from the top to the bottom. We had all, all the competitors that still had the same agenda. They had to get points. They had to finish the race. Yeah, and really unbelievable execution from the nine. Again, to go from fifth to first. But as we saw on the chart, execution all day, especially at the end of some of those stages. And those stages, that, that, those pay points. We are just talking about the points in the championship standings. Let's go back and look at some of the first and second stages. Uh, especially one example was William Byron. Because William Byron, a Team Hendrick car, a lot of speed, ends up with no stage points on the day. Let's look at his day. Well, so right here, he's run the whole first stage with Denny Hamlin the 11, and they haven't act actually looks like he's going to push the 24. There was a little disagreement on our broadcast, whether he just moved to the bottom or whether he got shoved to the bottom, but either way, as soon as the 24 of William Byron gets moved off the front bumper of the 11, it's game over for William. He never really recovered. Yeah, definitely a situation here where he's in control of the race, and he let the 11 pushing on him, and he had been pushing. They've been working well together most for 10 laps leading up to this. Uh, got to the bottom. That bottom lane was not the preferred lane. The second lane seemed to be yeah. the lane that worked with this car at Talladega. And, and the, the consequence of that, William Byron gets no stage points in stage one. And we have a graph of what it looks like after stage two, because William Byron never climbs again. This is him compared to the 11 of Denny Hamlin. So the 11 has a great stage one, which ends up, he told us after, was their plan. And after it's a stage one, look at him. He plummets. And he's almost just calm to be in the back. He wants to avoid traffic. William Byron, he misses out but then can never recover. I mean, look at this, inside the top 10, I think he gets back just barely to maybe 10th in the second stage. But I was shocked at these stages. I understand for the playoff cars why they were so important, but the whole field raced this race in three, basically, A mains. We ran 60 laps, 60 laps, and 68 for the finish. The first stage had yellow, so it got broken up, but green flag stops in the second stage. We saw, I mean, gas only, short pit stop. They were only racing to lap 120. Yeah, definitely only getting to that point. As a manufacturer and the way speed we're racing is at this point, you have to kind of jump on the strategy of the guys you're coming with. And, and when you look at this, I think the manufacturers drive. We're going to support the playoff cars. So it forces the field to do what the playoff cars want to do. And all of them are chasing, as we talked about, points are so tight here that everybody's chasing every point they can. They can't afford to take a, a tire stop when somebody could take fuel only and get ahead of them. Everybody's gonna be aggressive and race to the points position. Yeah, the significant part of this was during that stage, a fuel only stop. We've got the video of all the Chevys coming down pit road because you have to, even if you're on a different strategy at a place like Talladega, you can't just say, I want my own strategy. You gotta go with your, your people, your well, teammates. Well, to Todd's point, great communication, right? We see gas only from the five, gas only from the one, the 43 is leaving with them, the 99 is leaving as well. So playoff and non-playoff cars all working very well together and ended up being a car who has been eliminated from the playoffs, who we thought did the best job on pit road. We see the camo scheme, the real tree scheme of Tyler Reddick. And as he leaves pit road, we freeze it right here. I mean, look at the gap. He has gained, what, two, three car lengths. I mean, I thought he probably was gonna leave and blend in behind the 99. And it turns out, Todd, it would've been better for the eight. Gas and go a little too quick. Well, you wanna lead this line off if you've got enough fuel. But in order to lead the line off, you've gotta short yourself with fuel. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here. And we see it, the consequence here. Yeah, and the eight car, you know, he was a little short on fuel, and he's a leader. And a leader burns up more fuel. You're wide open as a leader. The guys behind you are part throttle burning less fuel. With one to go, the eight car ran out of gas in the backstretch. That's yep. hard for some people to wrap their mind around. We see the eight car coming off. The, this is where he's run out of fuel, but he yeah. came off that pit stop in front. If you're an eight fan, you're like, yes, 
Our crew did it. It's awesome. So Not here's the, what he wanted. Here's the best way to look at it. All of us, we drive our cars around in the city until the gas gauge gets below probably a quarter. You pull into the tank and you put the thing in, you fill it all the way up and you drive it until it gets below a quarter again. That's not what they're doing. <laughs> they're driving around the city and they say, well, my next stop is Todd's house and I'm gonna burn 1.2 gallons of gas. So I'm gonna go to the pumps and I'm gonna put in 1.25 gallons of gas because that should be enough. I mean, that's these guys, and remember, these aren't pumps. There's not a digital reader, yeah. right? There's a guy with a dump can and you hope he got plugged in right and you're calculating on fuel rates and you hope that it was sealed exactly. There is a lot of, I'm gonna use assumptions, which are never good in math. <laughs> Um, and that's really where someone like the eight gets in trouble. What we don't know is, was the stop too short? Or was the, did the gas yeah. man not get plugged in? Or did it get plugged in and it just not steal, seal as good as it possibly yeah, could? Yeah, because definitely, if you, get, if you get a little bit in that plug-in, if you get a little bit yeah. of fuel into the vent side, the fuel flow goes from like two gallons a second to like three quarters of a gallon a second. It can be huge differences on just how the mechanics of the engagement happens. And it took a big Chevy player out of the race at, you know, at a pivotal time. And manufacturers, that, that was a big deal at any super speedway. But we saw some issues when it comes to losing your manufacturer teammates in this race. Well, heading in, we know we have a ton of Chevys. We know I have a pretty good chunk of Fords. Not a lot of Toyotas, only six going in. We've already lost Ty Gibbs to an early accident and right here coming to pit road under green. Christopher Bell spins around and kind of a double whammy. I think this was gonna be gas only. Now he has flat tires, but it does more than just affect the 20. Yeah, and, and, and this slide through here, it ends up being a, a, a pass through for him, puts him a lap down and puts him buried. The bigger piece of this is we're down to five Toyotas. Now we've taken one away and the 20, we're down to four. And he was coming with the 18. 18's lost his draft, drafting partner. So really the Toyota camp's down to three as you've shuffled him back. You can't make that happen with three. I, I really think, you know, this is a deficit for the Toyota group. Definitely a deficit for Denny Hamlin. He did a great job to put himself in position working with whoever he could, which really wasn't a teammate for him. Denny Hamlin, the only Toyota in the top 15 and still stayed up there throughout the whole day. I think that shows off Denny's skill if you... Oh, yeah, we talk, had this he's driving a Ford or a Chevy. I don't know how many trophies he has. If you give him five more teammates up there... Uh, he wins a lot of races. He wins a, <laughs> he wins a lot of races. Lot if you put him in a, in a Ford or a Chevrolet, yeah. I, I think he's he's got he's, yeah. he's got Not doubled. Not because Toyotas are slow, but no. there's only six. Yeah. If you put or another way, if you put six more Toyotas out there with Denny, yeah, then he, he wins then a lot. He, of races. he wins a lot a lot more still. Interesting. So. That covered the Toyotas on Sunday. Let's talk about the Fords because they were running well. Ryan Blaney running up front, but you need some help, and he had a lot of it for much of this race until that final pit stop. What happened? Well, he had everything he needed. He had Brad Kozlowski, a six-time Talladega winner. But right here, let's take a look. This is Kevin Harvick. I circle him because another camo scheme. They're hard. It was hard enough from the booth, but we put some camo on the cars. You're going to see Kevin Harvick right here turn to the left. He's coming to pit road. But the sixth, the second car in line also has to do a pass-through. But he does a real solid to Ryan Blaney. He's already had the penalty, so he has to come to pit road. He runs the extra lap to keep the 12 in line and running along. Now we're on board with the four. This is never a good look when the field is leaving you outside the window. Yeah, definitely. Situation of six and four, both speeding on the last green flag cycle. The six stuck with the 12 here to get him momentum till he got blended back up with the speed because they had control of the field as long as they got ahead of him. If he dumps off to pit road, the 12 doesn't have any a drafting party to start with. The one car slides and the 12 ends up deep in the field. So listen, I don't know if Brad Kozlowski would have pushed the 12 to the win with Brad wanting to win himself. Um, but there are very few pushers better than Brad Keselowski, and I'm sure Ryan Blaney would have loved to see a few more blue ovals up there in those closing laps. Yeah, speeding penalties. Dominoes fell when the four and the six went out. You never know what that did to the 12's day. Let's look at what it did to the point standings, though, after that Talladega race. Chase Elliott, a playoff race winner, finally, contender, finally wins a race here in these playoffs. Let's look at that right side of the chart, though, because those are the drivers that go into the Roval currently out. What do you see? Well, so not a huge shakeup, in my opinion, right? We have Chase Elliott with the win. On the right side, Alex Bowman, uh, the points really don't matter. I hate to say it like that. All we want to see is Alex Bowman back behind the steering wheel. If it does happen this week, it's a must win. Todd, Christopher Bell, 33, you're thinking must win as well? I, I feel like he, unless there's something crazy that happens between Chase Briscoe and, and Austin Sindrick, I, I think I think Christopher's got to win here as well. So then in my mind, it's a points battle from William Byron at minus 11. Remember, he has an appeal pending. We're going to assume uh, nothing changes there. And then we have Sindrick, Briscoe on the cut line. I really believe it's Byron probably up to Logano. Hamlin at plus 21 isn't going to sleep great. Uh, but Logano, Larson, Spurs at center column, they really need to kind of count those points, mind their P's and Q's to have a successful role. Yeah, I definitely feel like 
the, the, the second column here, they're going to chase first stage points. Yeah. Yeah. And this all gets settled Sunday at the Roval. So let's preview that a little <laughs> bit. And to preview it, to look ahead, let's look back a little bit at what won last year because uh, I think we're going to see a little chaos, and chaos isn't a strategy, Steve. Well, so the Roval is, it, we've seen it only a handful of times versus a lot of the other road courses. And every time, it is chaos. Last year, it was Kyle Larson with an alternator. A couple years ago, it was Chase Elliott into the wall. So if we put our top two finishers on our graph, we're going to show you just how messy it was. I'm not even going to pretend to draw. The blue line is Kyle Larson, five stops. The eight of Redick, I think, also has five stops. They finished first, second. Todd, I don't know about you, but as a crew chief, when I was prepping, you don't prep for this. No. This is managed chaos. So, so how would you prep this week? It's the same length, 108 laps. Stage one, 25, stage two ends uh, a lap 50. Blank yeah. slate, let's do it. If we, if we put a clean slate up here, it really, it, I think the question mark here is two stops or three stops. I think if I'm gonna look at this race, I'm gonna two stop this race. We saw last year when AJ Allmendinger, he went to lap 36, which put him in position mm -hmm. to do that. We've got a little more fuel in the tank now than we had with last year's car, a little less fall off. Seems like I'm probably gonna come here about 36 for the first stop, okay. and then I'm gonna come about 74 for the second one. I'm gonna split this race into thirds. It's gonna take most of all the fuel to get there. When I do this, I'm gonna have to wait on fuel. Well, first of all, I don't like waiting on fuel. I'm gonna make sure he's labeled as two, because I'm not going with his strategy. <laughs> My cars have never been fast enough to only pit twice, and I don't like waiting on fuel, so I'm going to pit three times. I'm going to come right at the end of the stage. So I'm going to finish the stage, try to score some points. Then I don't know if this is allowed in the rules of this new game we're playing, but I'm going to draw a square because I'm going to leave my options open around there. And then I'm actually going to match his stop. I'm going to come right with him in the middle of that final stage. In my mind, I'm hoping to score some points in stage one. The box I drew is really my only intersection here. It depends on where I ran at stage one and who else is on the racetrack. If I'm not going to score st stage points, I'm going to pit before 50. If I'm really good, I'm going to pit after 50. Why that matters is I will then have scored points in stage one and stage two, but that gives me three stops. I'm going to come to pit road three times. And the thing that I'm going to do to you here is that when you come for that second stop, I'm going to stay out and I'm going to cycle ahead of you. I'm hoping that I can drive out to a big enough lead that the extra three and a half seconds of fuel I'm going to have to take mm -hmm. on this stop. Yep, that's right. Wow. I've got enough of a lead to cover that. Yeah, so let me tell you what I'm going to tell my driver when we leave pit <laughs> road after I put that fresh set of tires on lap 51. I am going to be on the, I'm going to be on the reins. I'm going to be running the whip saying, listen, this is the most important window of the race. There's a group up there that they need more fuel than us. You have better tires. I know tires haven't been worth a lot today because they're probably not going to be worth a lot. You got to stay close, buddy. We're going to be three seconds less on pit road. You got to keep us in the game and trying to continue to kind of egg my driver along to know I'm trying to ruin Tom's strategy, and that's the way to do it. And there's different strategy. I mean, some drivers will need points, but if, I think of Chase Elliott doesn't need any stage points. The eight doesn't need any stage points. AJ Allmendinger doesn't need any stage points. What strategy do they jump out on? Well, you just named three guys that I think are going to be really, really fast, so I hate to agree with my, my cohort <laughs> over here, Todd, but if I have a car as fast as those three, I'm probably only going to pit twice. Not to mention, Todd, even in the rain at Watkins Glen, it seemed like the Hendrick cars, the nine car were on that strategy, so I expect to see two unless something crazy happens. And the one, the caveat that the two stop brings is you are waiting on fuel on both stops, which means that we we can tell the tire changers, be deliberate, make sure they're tight, make sure they're good. It's less risk on the race. You just got to, you know, got to be on the fueler guy. Try to make that as efficient as possible. Now, either way, I have my calculator charged and ready because points are going to really, really, even if someone else wins, we still have a whole bunch of drivers that are going to be counting points. And we can see either one of these strategies get diverted <laughs> to something else with a caution, yeah. as we saw in the past. The eight and five last year did not script out this race as a five-stop race. This yeah. is why the crew chiefs get the big bucks. And don't forget, we got some cool tools on NASCAR.com and the NASCAR app, the driver compare tool. You can watch it during the race, compare two drivers, and see a lot of this good data as the race goes on. It should be an awesome one on Sunday. The Bank of America 400 at the Roval on NBC. It's going to be a great one. 2 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you watch because elimination is on the line. Been a great show for Todd Gordon, for Steve Letart. I'm Alan Cavana. We'll see you next week. NASCAR Inside the Race right here on NASCAR.com. This year, see more. The full field of in-car cameras. 